Right guys, Golf Swing Weekly Fix Time. Mark Crossfield here. I've got my driver, got my GC2 HMT, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about controlling spin. So many things are talked about when it comes to driver spin. I think it's quite misunderstood. Also, when you're buying these things, it's such a buzzword that people use. Let's show you some of the things that's influencing spin for me, and possibly for you, or definitely for you when you hit shots as well. Let's get stuck in. So, first thing that's going to influence spin is strike. So I'm going to hit a shot. Struck that one quite well. It's quite a neutral flight. That's spinning 3,300 revs. Now the spin numbers are coming from our range balls. It's around 800 to 1,000 revs more with these balls. That would be around a 2,000 with a real golf ball because of our neighbour. So 3,300 on what felt like a decent strike. I'm going to hit another one now. So I caught that one on the toe and slightly out the bottom. That one has gone up to 4,200 revs. So the, the spin has jumped up 900 revs there from where I struck that. I struck that lower than the middle part of it, the center of gravity. So that ball was trying to move up the face. It's adding gear effect. It's adding spin to my shot. So if I was measuring for a new club, or thinking about distance here. If you're not working that strike in, you're not actually measuring anything, in my opinion. To be honest with you, and this is a little bit controversial, but if you're not measuring with a machine like GC2 HMT that measures strike, I'm not actually sure what you're measuring if you're looking at spin number. Now, this is the most interesting point, I think. I get people asking me, how do they reduce their spin? So they say, oh, I hit shots. Um, and I spin my driver, say, around 4,000 revs with a real ball. What driver should I get to reduce that spin? Now, my experience of testing all the drivers out at the moment and in past, I think the highest spin manipulation I got out of a driver was 500 revs, and it was the Cobra one where they moved the weight way forward and way back, so the, the track was kind of the closest to the face and the closest back that I've seen. Also, TaylorMade's SLDR had very low spinning characteristics, which certainly helped me improve my max distance just my overall distance would move because when you put a cg that far forward and the spin comes off when i mishit it in a low spinning way i actually was hitting it shorter so it was kind of a balancing act so how much the driver can do to you is minimal now this doesn't mean doesn't don't go and get a custom fit because you've got loft you've got speed uh, you've got loft delivered you've got speed you've got strike and you've got angle of attack to work in there for your spin numbers that's how all these machines are getting their kind of numbers for spin from around those characteristics so let me show you um, 3300 on a de on a decent shot I'm now going to hit one in a different way so I've hit that one where I've hit down at the ball. I've tried to keep loft on the face as I've hit down uh, and I've had the face open to a path. Uh, my spin number's on the second page. Just, let's just wait for it to come back. There it is. That's spinning at 5,000 revs. So just over 5,000 revs. So I've added almost 2,000 revs of spin. Bear in mind, driver's only going to move it around 500. So I've moved it 2,000 near revs of spin there from my angle of attack face to path and dynamic loft. So you've got a thing called spin loft as you're hitting your shots. So you've got where the loft points as you strike the ball. So the dynamic loft, let's say that's at X, and then you've got your angle of attack. Now this gap between these two lines is called your spin loft. The closer you get these two angles, the less spin you'll have, subject always around that strike. So if I'm gonna hit my really low spinning drive, I might tee the ball up a bit higher Anyone who knows Joe Miller, long driving expert, trying to really minimise spin, tees the ball up kind of almost as high as his belly button. Um, so I'm going to hit up at this ball, but I'm going to try and present less loft as well. So I'm going to hit up while presenting less loft. That's going to knock spin off. So we were 5,000 just over. Didn't quite get hold of that, but that one's 1-6, one, 1-6 six, one, six with these balls. I'm hitting up with next to no loft. Now the problem I've got, which Joe Miller doesn't struggle with, I don't have as much speed. So that kind of low spinning characteristics with a real ball, that'd be 900 revs. It's just gonna fall out, yeah. But look how much I'm manipulating spin with my delivery. For you guys and girls wanting to control spin with drivers, 
really in this technical age where people are really getting kind of pervy about the spin numbers it's all good but i see people getting very lost down the wrong road changing driver every week i've worked with students on feelings of trying like i did there hit up on the ball so I feel like they're hitting up while presenting no loft and i've halved their spin numbers and if that's a feeling they can use and play they get more distance more roll out those kind of things. I've got students who do what I did on my first one. They're hitting down while presenting loft, having a face open to a path. I get them to hit level with a face not open to a path. And we take 1,500 revs of spin off. Getting custom fit for a driver is key, but you've also got to understand your deliveries because there lies the real massive gains in spin or not. Let me know if this makes sense. Post comments down below as always. Is it something you're aware of or even practicing? Interesting how I can change those spins so easily. And I could have done that as a kid before the technology because I would have known that if I want one rolling a long way, I would feel one way and I would feel another way if I wanted to hit one which felt like I had lots of spin on it just for like a fun game, those kind of things. Post comments down below. Love to hear your thoughts. Speak to you soon. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Periscope, all the normal social places. Also, come and visit my new website, markcrossfieldgolf.com. See you over there.